Dinosaurs in movies and media have always been depicted as catastrophic agents of uncontrollable danger and disaster. What many people don't realize is that most of these movies tend to exaggerate the features of these creatures to make them more menacing. However, there's one dinosaur where the opposite was the case. Instead, this blockbuster completely downplayed the threat level to be almost playful. We're talking about the Dilophosaurus. The Dilophosaurus was much more terrifying than what was seen in the movies. Not only was it much larger than the movie's depiction, but this species stood closer to 10 or more feet in height than what we saw in Jurassic Park. Believe it or not, the Dilophosaurus was the largest predator in its ecosystem when it was alive during the early Jurassic period. Remains of a Dilophosaurus were first discovered in 1940 in the Kayenta Formation of Northern Arizona by a member of the native Navajo tribe named Jesse Williams. He found three skeletons of varied sizes and invited paleontologists from the University of California Museum of Paleontology, including Samuel P. Wells, to investigate. Among the three skeletons he discovered, one was nearly complete, including the skull, pelvis, and part of the vertebrae. At the time, this was one of the best preserved theropod skeletons that had been discovered. The other two were very eroded and only included small parts of the skulls, jaws, and some limbs. The fragments obtained from the other two less complete specimens were used as references to fully reconstruct the nearly complete one, which was a two-year undertaking. Once this was done, the specimen was incorrectly categorized as a megalosaurus. As paleontologists couldn't find a lot of differences between it and other megalosaurus remains that had been assembled. This was a common practice, as many theropod remains that were discovered were simply categorized as megalosaurus, as paleontology wasn't too advanced at the time. For 20 years, Dilophosaurus remained incorrectly categorized until 1964, when another fossil was found in the Kayenta Formation by Wells. This discovery was in even better shape than the one that had been found in 1940 and provided more insight into what would become our modern understanding of the Dilophosaurus. Notably, the new specimen's skull was much more complete and had a crest at its top, which paleontologists had wrongly attributed to fractured cheekbones in the previous specimens. Those skull fragments were, in fact, two crests at the top of the skull, one on each side of its midline. This was what prompted its reclassification from Megalosaurus to Dilophosaurus, which meant two-crested lizard. The Dilophosaurus specimen found in 1964 remains the largest of its kind to be discovered and gives an indication of just how massive these dinosaurs were. The specimen, which was speculated to be a mature adult of its kind, would have measured about 23 feet from snout to tail and weighed up to 880 pounds. The smallest weighed about 642 pounds. For anyone who has seen Jurassic Park, these numbers may sound shocking to you. There are multiple differences between the reality of the Dilophosaurus and what was shown in the movie, and this was even acknowledged by the movie's creators. In the making of book that accompanied the movie, they shared that Dilophosaurus was the most fictionalized dinosaur in their movie. So here are some of the things that they got wrong. The size of the dinosaur is the most obvious. Dilophosaurus was the largest land animal at its location at the time. They were also slender and hollow-boned, making them lighter than most other dinosaurs of their size. They roamed about what is now North America and were the largest theropods of the early Jurassic. In later eras, they would be replaced by the Allosaurus and eventually the Tyrannosaurus rex. One thing the movie got right is that Dilophosaurus was a fearsome hunter. For years, paleontologists debated on what Dilophosaurus diet and feeding style would be. This was primarily because of a subnarial gap at the front of its skull, which led to the belief that it had a weak jaw. The primary theory was that Dilophosaurus was a scavenger, feeding on any remains it came about and small animals. There was also speculation that Dilophosaurus would be a fisher due to its teeth shape, which was very similar to the fish-eating Spinosaurus. However, later research has shown that the Dilophosaurus was a hunter through and through. Its diet consisted primarily of large animals like prosauropods, and the skeletal gap that once made scientists believe that Dilophosaurus had weak bites strengthened their bites by allowing them to endure high pressure when biting down. This was ideal for taking down large creatures or creatures who put up a fight. 
Another indication that Dilophosaurus were likely hunters was the evidence in remains of other creatures found in the same region. The Cerasaurus was a basal sauropodomorph that lived in the same North America region alongside the Dilophosaurus. Interestingly, fossils of this dinosaur have shown signs of them being preyed upon due to teeth marks on the bones. The Cerasaurus was about half the size of Dilophosaurus, and the bite marks matched the teeth pattern of Dilophosaurus as well, indicating that they hunted down these dinosaurs. Most scientists agree that the Dilophosaurus' diet consisted mainly of large animals, though that doesn't mean that they wouldn't hunt down a smaller animal or even some fish if they found good prey. Now that we've established that the Dilophosaurus was a hunter, it's time to establish how it caught its prey. Since they didn't have frilled necks to ward off any potential attackers, they needed other means of defending themselves in the wild. The Dilophosaurus in Jurassic Park wasn't only misleading because of its small size, but also its small head and short teeth. The Dilophosaurus was at the top of the food chain in the early Jurassic period, and one of the ways it maintained this position was by using its massive jaws to attack prey. Both the jaws and skulls of the Dilophosaurus were large for their bodies, and its mouth was filled with about 30 long curved teeth. Their teeth were also serrated, which helped ensnare whatever animals they caught in their bite. There is no indication that Dilophosaurus could spit venom, as was seen in Jurassic Park, but it has been speculated that its bite might have been venomous, similar to a Komodo dragon. After the discovery, Wells first theorized that Dilophosaurus were scavengers who did not have a strong enough bite to hunt larger animals, but this was debunked by Robert T. Backer in 1986. It was discovered that not only did Dilophosaurus have a well-balanced snout, but its slender teeth were even found to be deadlier than claws and could break bone. Besides its deadly jaw, another offensive mechanism the Dilophosaurus had was its arms and claws. As a bipedal dinosaur, Dilophosaurus used their arms a lot for hunting. Studies of their remains have shown that they had very long and strong arms with deep pits that held enough muscles and ligaments to pack a punch. Their hands were not only incredibly flexible, a 2005 study revealed that Dilophosaurus would have been able to draw their humerus to be nearly parallel to their scapula, but they were also tipped with three sharp and deadly claws and a fourth vestigial one. These features allowed the Dilophosaurus to keep its prey immobile and fight back if attacked. One of the most noticeable features added to the Dilophosaurus was their frilled necks. This feature was not included in the book and was added by the art department of the movie to make the Dilophosaurus stand out aesthetically. The neck frills have been debunked multiple times over the years with geologist J. Brett Bennington. Even adding that, if the dinosaur had frills, it would have used it to scare away competitors, not prey. Instead of frills, the unique features on Dilophosaurus's heads were the crests. The skeletons of these crests were made up of thin bones, and paleontologists have theorized that they would have been covered in keratin in life. Thus, determining their actual shape and size is difficult. Theories of the crest's purpose have ranged greatly, but the most popular one remains that they were used for individual recognition among the species. Paleontologists believe that each Dilophosaurus had distinctly colored crests and the species used them to attract mates like a peacock flaunting its feathers. Theories also abounded about the crests being used defensively, but these were largely debunked as the crests were made of very thin bones. Their arsenal also included their incredibly powerful legs and light frame, which made them incredibly fast on land. They had massive, powerful thigh bones that led down to clawed feet that were rarely used for attack, but rather speed and agility. The air sacs in their vertebrae allowed them to access unidirectional breathing, a trait that some birds and crocodiles have. This contributed to the speed due to the high metabolism. The Dilophosaurus could likely run down any prey, making escape extremely difficult. Another thing that made escaping these dinosaurs difficult was the fact that they were likely pack hunters. This was not shown in Jurassic Park as Nedry, the irate computer programmer, was killed by a single Dilophosaurus. It is more likely that a Dilophosaurus' prey would have been hunted down by at least three of the dinosaurs. This is proven through the three fossils that were found in 1940, preserved relatively close to each other, and footprints that were discovered by Wells. 
From all their offensive and defensive attributes mentioned earlier, it's clear that three of these dinosaurs were more than enough to result in a death sentence for whatever poor prey they set their sights on. Despite all of these advantages, the Dilophosaurus has been discovered to be one of the most wounded and diseased theropods to be discovered. Eight bones were found damaged in the Dilophosaurus holotype, the highest among any theropods. Most of the damage found in the Dilophosaurus specimen was on its arms and fingers, leaving it permanently disabled despite the fact that the bones seemed to have healed completely. Many paleontologists wondered what could have caused so much damage to the fearsome predator. It is possible that the Dilophosaurus obtained all the injuries in one encounter, which would have left it unable to properly hunt for a long period as it healed. While most Dilophosaurus specimens have been found to have injured arms, very few have injured legs and feet. When Dilophosaurus roamed the Earth about 183 million years ago, the climate conditions were extremely harsh, as the Earth was still recovering from the effects of the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event. Life was scarce and climates were hot, with the Dilophosaurus living at a time and place characterized by scorching dry seasons. Lake Dixie, a prehistoric lake known to attract dinosaurs seeking relief, would have served as both a food source and refreshment. Dilophosaurus could make habitats near overflowed rivers or oases during the wet season. Another interesting factor is what other creatures were resilient enough to survive these harsh conditions. Some dinosaur species were roaming the earth at the time, such as the Cerasaurus, as mentioned before, the Scutellosaurus, Megapnosaurus, and Chiantavenator. Besides the dinosaurs, other animals that lived at that time include some aquatics like fish and hybodont sharks, reptiles and amphibians like lizards, prehistoric prosolirus, diocecilia, crocodilomorphs, caentachelis, and many, many more. Land animals included Dinobetodon, Caentotherium, and Oligochyphus. Among all of these, Dilophosaurus was the apex predator and king of the wild at its time, dominating every other species. Fans of this ferocious dinosaur can only hope that it will one day be adapted accurately.